Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely, barely visible. Barely visible. Please adjust the slider until the dog and cat are friends. That's too much. That seems enough. Comes the number nine. There it is. Please adjust the slider until you stop adjusting the slider. Which of the two made up words below is most appealing? Ocuboinkle or scrum touch? I like ocuboinkle. I don't know what it means, but I like it. Please don't adjust the slider. Noted. Do you know what time it is right now? Um. Yes. Is the time that it is right now the correct time? I would presume. What well, is time anyway? Yes. Time is yes. Is there anything about yourself that you haven't told me? Um, yeah, there's a few. Help. Yes. Will you come back to visit me? Yes, of course I will. What was that? All right, so anyway, welcome back to the parable of... No, no, he's going to start talking. Welcome back to the parable of Stanley. Uh, last time, I fell into the void and played Rocket League. Any questions? Hey, the new content door is there now. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yes, because there's more this way that I have not done. Belief. I Stanley go decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, That's so he turned think. around and got back on track. There's a lot here. There's a wrench, there's a broom, there's a thing that janitors use. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No empty. reason to still be here. I'm going to still be here until you acknowledge this room is not empty. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> Acknowledge there's stuff in the room. Nothing to interact with. I can look at things like the duct tape and tools. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> uh, well, I think it'd be funny because you're going to flip out and all I have to do is stand here. You do here. realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I said aware. Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. I disagree. I think it's really significant. Like, you have whatever that is. You have, uh, this Maybe thing. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. It is. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope <laughs> your friends find this concerning. They don't. Also, I don't have friends. So, who's really the winner here in Narrator? Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> well, screw you two! I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. Yeah, after you just killed you me. to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed in front of your screen. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. 
they have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. All right, perfect, noted. Ah, second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Is he done? Is he, is he, is he done? Okay, I guess he's done. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. That's what you think. Stanley walked down the stairs to the room of red. Uh, hi, Lynn. I can't read that. Good evening. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Mm. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? Because All everyone's because gone. He believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make what? other strange observations. Wait, wait a tick. For example, why couldn't he see his feet? When he looked down. See? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Isn't that weird? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. You know, that's true, Very coffee simple. nut. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a dream. I am dreaming. It's all a dream. Felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Yo! I'm then flying! he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. This is like five levels I'm of fourth wall. A voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. I guess I'll prove it. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my I wife. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. And that's
that's the biggest lie of them all. What? Stanley began screaming. Ah. Someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. No, it didn't. Okay, I guess it did. I lied. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Wow, you changed gears. Narrator. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. I don't care about Mariella. She rose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, oh. and walked to her place of work. Stay on. this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. Help I him! Sane. You're I a psychopath! Control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. Get him! It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. He's dead. He just died. Remember the meeting she had scheduled for that day. But he's dead. Very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. I don't care, Mariella. The rest of her life. Yeah, she had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body, and then she turned and ran. Well, screw you, Mariella. I yo uh, wah well, no 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 sir no no you no what the, I'm alive and I don't have feet. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope, skip that mess. Going this way. This was, no, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. This what for Marielle? Your chance to redeem yourself. Not yours. To put your work aside. To let her back into your. I'm going life. through the door. Just stop She's talking. Been waiting. What the? That's her stand. Fine, I'll answer the phone. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Yeah. Oh, no, sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, yeah. All right, now I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Ah. <laughs> Gotcha! What oh, the... come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? No, you not to really. Make their but... life to you. Jeez. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. Up I'm yours. trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Oh, yeah, by all means. I'm going, nope. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, what? Uh, hey, look, dog. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. You what, mate? N no, I won't press a circle on my controller. How's that sound, Nelidor? No, I refuse. Why? Why is this blocked off? Whatever, fine. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a okay. job that demands nothing of him. I have to push buttons. Button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Okay. Why am I getting roasted, huh? I didn't come here for this. Uh, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. Okay. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. I am getting... Oh. Up to watch TV, okay. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. What are you doing to me, man? excited him terribly. Next to spend time with the boys. There are no boys. What are you? So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. I'm scared. Pair dinner. As he okay. wandered through oh. his fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Help. Help me. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. 
And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. That's right, Mark. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Tell your wife you love her. Um, I don't think you're my wife, but um, if you are, then yeah, love, love, love you. But there is no answer. Ah. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Go and I'm to trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long no. as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. No. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm better than this. What happens if I don't? Are you gonna help me? Nothing's happening, narrator. Now let's screw you. You can't stop me. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? To question nothing. Okay. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Please die. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Ah!